North America, Europe, and Japan offer some of the world's most incredible boots money can buy. However, these countries and their brands can also be incredibly expensive. You can expect to pay over $300 just for the most basic designs from the most basic boot companies like Red Wing. And there are plenty of companies that'll charge you over five, six, seven hundred dollars And in Japan, you know, over a thousand dollars for boots that are like hand welted, like really, really old fashioned stuff. But if you haven't heard yet, Indonesian boots are making a splash in the global boot scene. They are offering like a really great compromise between incredibly expensive, high quality stuff, like the kind of Japanese level sort of quality stuff, but at the price of like a Red Wing boot or even less without that prohibitive price tag. Making Indonesian brands one of the best value propositions in boots today. Here I've got my boots from Sagara and Santalum, which I'll discuss a little bit later on. A bit of backstory here, when the Dutch colonized Indonesia during the 19th century, this is like why there are so many boot makers there, they brought with them their shoe making influence to the archipelago. When the Dutch left in the 1940s, Fortunately, that shoemaking industry remained and eventually concentrated in the city of Bandung in the West Java province. There was obviously a vast oversimplification of all the ins and outs of colonization, but for our purposes, boots are the results of the colonization that people are especially interested in when it comes to what we're talking about today. Uh, on a personal note, I'm pretty obsessed with Indonesia myself. I actually had a job lined up there at a newspaper before I decided to come here instead, but I am very interested in Indonesia for many reasons, and not just because they made the best martial arts movie of the 2010s, which you should definitely watch. So why are Indonesian boots worth checking out? Well, there are several compelling reasons that you might want to look at. The first one, you want to guess this one, it's price. Prices in Indonesia range from like the high 100s for domestic pull-up and rough-out leathers to like the mid 200s for Chrome XL leather from uh, Chicago's Halloween Tannery to like the mid 400s, I'm generalizing here, but like the mid 400s you can find Japanese and Italian horse hides. If you know a thing or two about boots, you know that's half the price you'd expect to pay from American made boots or European made boots and you're not getting knockoffs either. You can get them with Halloween leather, with real day night soles, the whole shebang. You can get boots that are practically identical to a $500 or even a $1,000 boot for much, much less. Number two is craftsmanship. So not only can you get inexpensive boots in Indonesia, but you can also get inexpensive, very high quality shoes in Indonesia. And I'm not just talking about like a good quality Goodyear welted boot, which is the standard for resolable construction with boots. You can get, for example, hand welted, which is what the Sagara boot is, which is a vastly more labor intensive and difficult way of making a, a resolable boot. It takes a lot, lot longer and a lot of expertise to be able to make a hand welted boot versus a Goodyear welt, which is like the, uh, the, standard, the, the standard kind of boot construction you're gonna get in the US and Europe. You can also get stuff like Norwegian welts, like this one from Santalum which is this really old fashioned way of practically waterproofing boots. Like it's what adventurers used in the 19th century when they were like, you know, trudging around the jungle and everything. And practically nobody makes Norwegian welts anymore. You can find it somewhere and you can find hand welts in some places, but if you do, it's gonna be way more expensive than what you're gonna get here. So like boots from Indonesia, like some of them are like boots preserved in amber from another century. It's just like really, really cool, very high skill stuff that just isn't taught in most places anymore. Number three is customization. Most, if not all Indonesian brands essentially offer a made to order service where you can personalize a lot of the aspects of the boot. They usually have several models that you can start with and most of them also let you change the last and some even adjust the last based on the measurements of your foot. So guys who always complain about having trouble finding good boots that fit their like wide or narrow feet can easily find what they want in Indonesia. In addition, like uh, my cigar boots here, I had the option of getting six different leathers, four different soles. You can pick like any lining, a different leather for the tongue and the counter if you want, any combination of eyelets and speed hooks, uh, the whole thing. So it's a very you boot, not just in the measurements, but also in like the way the boot is constructed. So at Indonesia, you can get a boot that's like truly yours in a way that's pretty hard to find, especially not at this price point. Let's say you're really into the Viberg service boot, but you don't want to pay $700. Well, a lot of Indonesian boot makers are inspired by North American work boots and you can get pretty close without spending anywhere near as much. A buddy of mine, Eugenio Salonga, actually got some plain toe service boots from Santalum and they had all the hallmarks of a Viberg boot. They had the stitch down construction, the day night soles, the flat wax cotton laces, a sleek but flat silhouette and he got it for $280, like less than half the price of a Viberg boot. So, those are interesting reasons to consider trying out some Indonesian companies, but there are some potential downsides with Indonesian companies, and it's not that English isn't their native language, um, because I haven't actually really had issues with that myself when ordering Indonesian boots. 
The main issues, I'd say there are two. The main issues are that, but one, because the boots are typically made to order and typically by hand, and not just by hand, but particularly laborious kinds of hand making, you'll wait definitely over a month and sometimes four or five months and now and then like six months for a pair of boots. People are typically very happy to wait given all the other upsides I just mentioned, but that is a downside. The other main downside is that these companies seldom have, I mean, if they have a website, it's like often clunky and like clearly not updated very often. And then like you find out the boots on the site aren't what they are currently selling or something like that. And oftentimes Indonesian boot companies don't have websites at all. You just have to message the brands on like WhatsApp or Instagram or email them. And I know how shady that sounds, but if you, if you just do that, like if you just contact them directly, you can get whatever you want made and it's fine. Like it's, it's no problem. It just, it requires a greater leap of faith than you may be accustomed to with your boot buying. And that puts off some guys. But anyway, without any further ado, and in no particular order at all, these are the best Indonesian boot brands that you should know about and that you can trust to order with like an Instagram message. First up is Underhoud. Uh, that is Dutch, Google tells me, for maintenance, uh, upkeep, repair, that kind of thing. Underhoud, which is how it's pronounced, is uh, touted lately a lot by boot aficionados online because of its high level of craftsmanship, especially for the price. Rizki Afnan, the founder, really cares about the quality of his boots as he and his two apprentices finish just two to three pairs a week. Underhoud mainly create casual boots like service boots, lineman boots, packer boots, engineer boots, and apron toe split toe boots. You can order them in domestic, Italian, American, and Japanese leathers, and with leather or rubber soles as well. Unfortunately, they're very hard to buy, so you just have to message them on Instagram about when their MTO ordering will open up again, because he doesn't open it very often due to such high demand. But of course, that makes people want them even more. Number two is Benzene. This is a company that is uh, founded by a friend of Yoki Pascara who founded Creva, which is uh, a leather bag that I own that like, I really liked. I did a video about it not too long ago. Um, so that's kind of how I got introduced to Benzene because I've become like fairly close with the guy who runs Creva. Benzene is based in Jakarta instead of Bandung. Most of them are in Bandung in West Java. But uh, even though they're in Jakarta, uh, they make some of the most elegant casual boots out of Indonesia. Their laceless boots, like the Chelsea, Jodhpur, and Engineer boots are very sleek and can even be mistaken to be from a European or American maker pretty easily. But their service boots are no slouch either and they work really well in smart business casual outfits. Like some of them actually look fairly similar to Thursday boots, like relatively sleek, but relatively casual. Like many Indonesian companies, they have a not very good website. So check out their Instagram or WhatsApp or email them to get an idea as to what they can do for you. And that's pretty much the case for almost everyone on this list, unless I say otherwise. Number three on this list is Cigara, which is my first Indonesian boot brand. Um, actually, I got the box here. There it is. I got this a million years ago. Cigara. Cigara uh, covers like the whole range of like refined dressy, like this one here, to uh, rugged casual boots, lace to toro boots, wingtip boots, plain toe derby boots, and even Italian hiking boots. I, I guess it wouldn't call this like super dressy, but you know, it's like sort of, it's a bit more refined than an Allen Edmonds Higgins mill, this particular boot here. Um, you can customize pretty much the entire boot. From time to time, they'll have some ready to wear stock available through their site but usually it's all gonna be made to order. Popular boots from Cigara include the Cordmaster and the Legacy, which is what this one is. This is the Legacy 9 boot. And an upside to Cigara is that their website is fairly functional, like one of the most functional websites for an Indonesian boot maker, which isn't saying a lot, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty good website. Number four is texture. Uh, I actually, I only have boots from Cigara and Santalum myself, um, but I do, I do, I got a lot of friends to help out with this uh, review, this video, so I could like know more about the brands. Texture is one I've had my eye on for a long time. It has a well-rounded, ready to wear and uh, made to order lineup. So like ready to wear and made to order. And the designs are among the most refined ones you'll find in like some Indonesian makers. But they can also accommodate like wilder ideas from customers because they have a lot of choices for leathers, which include domestic full grain, rough out, pebble grain, hoeing waxed flesh from uh, the United States, CF Stead's Kudu, and even CF Stead's Nordic Ox, which is also called a musk ox. It's a kind of an especially stinky Scandinavian animal that's actually more closely related to sheep and goats and cows. Pretty weird stuff, but yeah, you got some pretty interesting leathers you can play with at Texture. The company offers several distinct lasts, but they execute their dressy yet casual lasts that's very popular so well that it works for like most of their formal and casual footwear. Popular boots from Texture include the Pacific Service boots and Chelsea boots. And the best thing about Texture, one of the best things is that their website is beautiful. They actually have like a very well done website. So you can head there right now if you wanna check them out. 
Number five is Junket. Junket has a really good selection of casual boots and shoes. Um, they are fairly well known for like mock toe boots, brogues, loafers. Most of their offerings are made to order. They've got some off the shelf stuff, like depending on like when you get there and like what they've got, you know, uh, in storage. There's a really good selection of lasts as well, like lasts, leathers, soles, and many other details you can personalize. Their take on the service boot stands out because of its prominent heel and its pointy last, which they call their SC last. But of course, you can order it with a more rounded NH last if that's more your thing. Uh, remember, if you go to the website, you will see some pre-made boots there, but the real jewel in the crown is their made to order service. You can get like 13 different leathers, uh, 15 different soles, and like a bunch of different other types of construction you can pick from. So while they do have plenty of uh, off the shelf stuff you can buy, which is gonna be more enticing because it's already sitting there ready for you to buy, their made to order service is, uh, it's really worth checking out the kind of boot you can make because you're only constrained by your imagination. Number six is Renev, or Renev Goods Co. Uh, that's another boot maker who is not based in Bandung, but in Jakarta as well, like Benzene. They mainly create casual boots and shoes like service boots, uh, derbies, Chelsea boots, and mock toe boots. They have a wide range of leather options as well, which include local pull-up leathers, there's Halloween's Chrome XL, and horsehide, chamois leather, even bison leather as well. They don't have a website, but if you check out their Instagram, uh, you can see if there's something you like there, and then you can message them there, uh, or like on WhatsApp or something. They're well known for their DRB plain toe derbies and their BLK service boots, so uh, that's somewhere you can start your search. Number seven is Winston, which is a big name in Indonesian boot making. They're known for their elegant dress shoes, like their Grand Dior line, which are inspired by bespoke European and Japanese shoemakers. So for like guys that really like dressy, dressy shoes, but they want to get them for a lower price, uh, they'll often wind up going to Winston of all the other Indonesian boot makers. They have a good balance though of like the dressy and casual side of the footwear, from like plain toe derbies to chuckers to like capture Balmoral button up boots. The designs can compete with some of the best shoemakers around the world, and they also provide European and Japanese options for all of their footwear's leather. Last but not least is Santalum, uh, which is definitely my most worn in Indonesian boots. It's this really nice, like kind of sleek, not that sleek, uh, mock toe boot, the Norwegian one I'm totally obsessed with. Um, yeah, I, I'm really um, I'm quite fond of these Mile 85 boots from Santalum. Santalum has been offering made to order dressy and casual leather footwear since 2010. And customers can choose between Chrome Excel or like domestic pull-up, uh, rough out, vegetable tan leathers. If I say so myself, I would say that I helped to popularize this particular boot, the Mile 85, since it's uh, my review of this boot. It's actually the second thing that comes up on Google when you Google Santalum boots, right now it is anyway. But they're also uh, really well known for their service boots. Like Santalum was actually one of the first Indonesian boot makers to offer an inexpensive alternative to Viberg. So if that's the kind of thing you're looking for, like an inexpensive version of like some of the great North American brands, yeah, uh, Sanslim could be a good place to start your look. All right, that's my little video on the Indonesian boot industry and the brands that you should know about and the ones that I think you can trust. Uh, it's true that I only have Sagara and Sanslim myself, but like I mentioned earlier, I enlisted the help of a few friends to help me get some information on this one. Uh, I definitely wanna thank Eugenio Salonga. He's in Manila, Philippines, who's pretty well acquainted with Indonesian boot brands. He helped me out with the script here. And uh, that's the whole video. Make sure you subscribe as well, man, because I got a lot more boot reviews and uh, boot comparisons and like uh, leather education, all that kinds of weird heritage boot stuff coming up. Thank you.